finally, I have landed in the land of Skyrim 6 online. All I need is Daedric armor and- Whoa, I'm gonna cut you right off there, peasant. Oh, Cavduit, the freak show of ESO, I've heard of you. Can you help me get Daedric armor? Do you really think that this is how ESO works? You just walk your way into greatness and skill? Uh, well, that's how it was in Skyrim. Do you think I look like Skyrim to you? Oh my goodness gracious, you was your right. These are different games. Well then, I'm Cavduit, here to teach you- How to get Daedric armor so I could be powerful. All right, let's start at the beginning. I'm here to teach you about builds. A lot of people come into ESO believing that it's just like Skyrim, that specific armor styles make you stronger, and that you can be anybody you want to be and just have it work out. Well, that's no longer the case, kiddos. Although there are a few elements fairly close to what the previous Elder Scrolls titles had, ESO is a completely different game in almost every way. I kept it. Your builds are utter garbage. How do you honestly expect to teach others about builds when you don't even understand your own? My builds are not garbage. They are... Unique. That's it, that's it. Builds aren't about copying somebody else's piece by piece, they're about making your character how you enjoy playing the game. That's why my garbage build is able to do so well, because I understand how it works. And one of the most important things to start off with in this game is race and class. When going for a specific build, focus on the actual perks of your race, then choose your class depending on what best suits your race. Making sure you understand your race is important, as it will literally dictate the entirety of your build, including armor, weapons, passives, rolls, traits, clips, and absolutely everything. And one other thing, what alliance you're in does not matter. The only thing it affects is your cool status, meaning that if you're not in the Daggerfall Covenant, you're probably gonna be considered as lame. After asking a ton of people and researching with stamina and magicka builds with races, here are the more popular choices. For Breton, magicka. Orcs, stamina. Redguard, stamina. High Elf, magicka. Wood Elf, stamina. Khajiit, stamina. Argonian Magicka, Dark Elf Magicka, Nord Stamina, and Imperial Stamina. The thing about ESO is that classes are not specific just for Magicka or Stamina, they can be either or, it's how you intend to play as that class. There are clear reasons to choose a specific race for your specific class if you're wanting to play a certain role, so let's talk a little bit about roles before classes. Having a role in ESO is kinda like this. Oh, honey, you're home. How was work? Bow was just awful. Mr. Tank expects me to work overtime with Magicka, and I don't have that. And Miss DPS is constantly blaming me for her dumb decisions. It's like having a full-time job. Choosing your role in ESO is definitely something to think about at the beginning of the game. Obviously, you're a little busy learning about your character, but there are three major roles to think about as you level up. As a DPS, meaning damage per second, your main focus is to pump out as much damage and constant damage as possible. Single target is incredible incredibly important as a DPS as it allows for quick takedowns on solo enemies. The other form of DPS is called AOE, Area of Effect, which allows you to deal damage to multiple enemies at once. As a healer, you're definitely going to want to focus on building up in Magicka as being a stamina healer is remotely impossible or just not nearly as effective. Personally, I'm going to recommend being a Templar if you're going to be a healer role just because they have a specific class skill line that's just for healing. Finally, there's tanks, the guys that are going to keep all of the enemies taunted and away from their teammates and sustain the heavy amount of damage focused on them. Just a tip, heavy armor is a great idea to level in if you're thinking about being a tank. Next up, let's talk about abilities, which contains ultimates, actives, and passives. First off, your passives aren't attacks or buffs, rather they provide you with extra perks with each skill line. They can provide perks to your stamina, magicka, health, weapons, armor, and more. Your active abilities are your actual skills that you place on your skill bars, either attacks or buffs. Your active abilities use up stamina and magicka, so learning how to properly use them without draining your resources is very important. Buffs are also important to utilize as they can provide you with increased damage, recovery, resources, and more. A lot of buffs don't actually do any damage, they're simply activated. Finally, ultimates are your abilities that do not take any resources, rather they are charged up and used as game changers. Your ultimates can dictate the overcome of a fight if used properly. Each ultimate has a different level of charge, therefore some have a very short charge time, whereas others can take a very long time to fully charge up. One more very important thing to remember is that in ESO, you want to focus on specific resources exclusively when it comes to attribute points. Thinking that putting equal amounts in each area is never a good idea. You see, your build's gonna rely heavily on either stamina, magicka, or health, and you need to play it smart when selecting your attribute points. Don't be afraid to see this. This is normal for builds, and in the end, you'll need that much in order to sustain your build. Next up, let's talk about something incredibly important to your build, and that's armor and weapon sets. First off, you need to know that light armor is made for magical builds, medium armor is meant for stamina builds, and heavy armor is made for tanky builds. 
And remember, styles do not make you better. They simply add to the creativity of your build. Finally, I have a red painted Daedric Armor. I'll never get beaten. Do you have any traits or glyphs on them? Uh, what are those? That's what I thought. Earlier on in the game, sets really don't matter as you are constantly picking up new and better weapons and armor to use, so utilizing what you find is the way to go. But once you become an uber nerd and hit level 50, you're probably gonna want to put on some better armor, especially stuff that gives you perks. Therefore, sets come into effect. A set contains a specific amount of pieces you can wear to achieve some extra perks on your build. Some sets require two pieces, three pieces, or five pieces. For example, on this set, the Clever Alchemist, wearing the first four pieces will give you some health and damage perks, but wearing a full five pieces will give you a massive damage bonus when you drink a potion. Sets of armor and weapons need to be either crafted or picked up in specific locations, and remember, jewelry is not a craftable item, nor upgradable, thus you will be forced into grinding hours and hours of agony and failure to acquire a specific piece. Unless, you know, you're able to buy in a guild store, of course. Now we're moving on to armor and weapon specifics. You've got traits and glyphs. These are vital to your build's efficiency. Finding glyphs out in the world or crafting them yourselves will allow you to slap them right on your armor, weaponry, and jewelry to add to your various different specs on your build, such as extra resources, recovery, more damage, you get the picture. Traits, on the other hand, are pieces crafted into the armor and are irreversible. They are permanent perks to your build to increase specific areas of your set. Each trait is incredibly unique and you will want to focus on acquiring certain traits for your armor to maximize the strength of your build. Also take note that armor, jewelry, and weapons have different traits on them. Finally, let's talk about Mundus Stones. Mundus Stones are an increase to a specific area of your build, like a free extra bonus and specifically located all across Tamriel. Each one adds to your build in distinct ways, so it's wise to look all over for them and figure out which ones best line up with what you are and what you need. You've got the Warrior for Weapon Damage, the Thief for Critical Strike Chance, the Shadow for Critical Strike Damage, the Apprentice for Spell Damage, the Steve for Speed and Health Recovery, the Ritual for Healing Effectiveness, the Antronach for Magicka Regeneration, the Serpent for Stamina Recovery, the Lord for Maximum Health, the Lover for Increased Spell Resistance, the Lady for Increased Physical Resistance, the Tower for More Maximum Stamina, the Mage for More Maximum Magicka. And there you have it, the general basics to what you need to look into to help you build up your, well, build. But remember, there is one race that is better than all of the rest, and there is a secret class that will help you deal unlimited amounts of damage. All you need to do to unlock this specific class is to... Yeah.